In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Jesus said, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Dear friends, we gather on this Monday Thursday evening to celebrate this Eucharist of the Last Supper. We do so, of course, in very difficult and changed circumstances, such that we won't be able to have a procession of the Blessed Sacrament at the end of this service, nor will we be able to keep watch uh, at the altar of repose. Instead, after this service, later on in the evening, at about nine o'clock, we do encourage you to join us live via our Facebook page to keep with us an hour's watch, uh, concluding with Compline at 10 o'clock. Do please be with us if you can. But this evening, we remember how Jesus celebrated the Last Supper before he died. He revealed his love by washing the disciples' feet and then sharing with them his body and his blood. So as we enter into the mystery of this celebration, let us first look to his loving mercy as we confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God our Father, you have invited us to share in the supper which your Son gave to his church to proclaim his death until, until he comes. May he nourish us by his presence and unite us in his love, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of this month every man shall take a lamb according to their father's houses, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for a lamb, then he and his nearest neighbour shall take according to the number of persons. According to what each can eat, you shall make your count for the lamb. In this manner shall you eat it, with your belt fastened, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and on all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague will befall, befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be for you a memorial day, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout all your generations, as a statute for ever. You shall keep it as a feast. This is the word of the Lord. 
the response to the psalm, I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. How shall I repay the Lord for all the benefits he has given to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful servants. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. O Lord, I am your servant, your servant the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer to you a sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Before the feast of Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, when the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments and, taking a towel, tied it round his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, what I am doing you do not understand now, but afterwards you will understand. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, The one who has bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not every one of you for he knew who was to betray him. That is why he said, Not all of you are clean. When he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, Do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example, that you also should do just as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and glorify him at once. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. You will seek me, and just as I said to the Jews, so now I say also to you, where I am going you cannot come. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. By this all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
Someone we share food with is likely to be our friend or perhaps be well on the way to becoming one of our friends. In an ideal world, the dinner table is more than just a, a functional space where human beings gather to, to refuel. The dinner table is the place where community is created, hospitality extended and conversations started. But it's also a place where divisions are difficult to hide or ignore. And I'm sure all of us will at some point have sat through a meal where the silence spoke volumes and the food was largely left to go cold. Now in the ancient world, much like today, a meal could be an occasion for acquiring or displaying uh, social status. Inviting influential or important people round for dinner is nothing new. However, the celebration of the Lord's Supper, the Eucharistic meal, was clearly intended to be something altogether different. This was the meal that intended to, to show and to demonstrate an alternative vision of community. It projected a sort of upside down social order. The Eucharist is the meal, the table, the food and the sustenance of a community shaped not by status, family ties, society or politics, but shaped by the Gospel. The Eucharist is a meal that speaks of relationships forged with and through the person of Jesus Christ. But that wasn't the case in first century Corinth. When St Paul wrote to the Corinthians regarding their celebration of the Eucharist, he observed, when you come together, it is not for the better, but for the worse. For in the first place, when you come together as a church, I hear that there are divisions among you. So when the Eucharist was celebrated properly, the better that St Paul alludes to should have included common divisions among the people, the congregation being overcome. Whatever the points of contention were within the Corinthian church, none of that should have mattered when they gathered around the altar. But that simply wasn't happening. The church in Corinth was a fractured community and that was all too evident when they gathered to celebrate the Eucharist. When St Paul wrote of their divisions, he wasn't thinking about the, the issues that often plague congregations, such as uh, who preferred the previous vicar or who objected to uh, the replacing of the old hymn books. No, St Paul was speaking of the gulf between rich and poor. For a minority of the well-to-do believers in Corinth had the leisure time to arrive early at the celebration and so to consume larger quantities of bread and wine than the rest. The majority, the people who had to finish their daily work before attending, well they didn't have the opportunity to share with the others in the way that Christian unity demanded or as Christ himself intended. The event that was supposed to declare and to celebrate their unity had actually become the place where their deepest divisions were now exposed. The very thing that was supposed to eradicate their differences was, in fact, exacerbating them. So rather than recalling the self-giving love of Christ, a minority who attended the Eucharist were, were in it for what they could get for themselves, to the detriment of others who wished to partake, those who were not quite as well off as they were. So in Corinth, it was really no longer the Eucharist that was being celebrated. The well-to-do had twisted the sacrament from being a memorial of Christ's accomplishments to a meal that was more representative of their superior social status within the congregation. It no longer reflected their, their need, rather it reflected their perceived, perceived prominence and self-importance. This was the reality of the Eucharist within that fractured uh, fractured. Corinthian community. And you can imagine how heartbreaking that must have been. I mean, nobody deserves the leftovers from the Lord's table, the scraps, if you like, from the altar. No one in the Christian community should be restricted to, 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 to a pittance that's left over while others overindulge. The Eucharist is the place where the followers of Jesus Christ are set free to overcome the barriers of of ordinary fractured society, not to embody or to reflect them. 
So in order to try and get the Corinthians back on track, St Paul takes them back to first principles as he reminds them in that second reading that we heard, the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are one body, uh, we all partake of the one bread. The Eucharist is the sign and seal of Christ's redemptive work on behalf of a lost and fractured community. Christ is the sinless one who was betrayed on this very night so that we, the, the, the hit and miss people of God, could be saved from our sins and welcomed into the new life of the kingdom. This is my body given for you, declared Jesus. This is my blood poured out for you, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, so that sins might be forgiven. The breaking of Jesus' literal body and the pouring out of his own blood binds us together in the mystical body, the church. Christ's body and blood removes every barrier, or it should do, be it race, class, age, politics, etc. Christ's body was broken and his blood poured out so that those who put their hope and trust in him could be made whole, whole as individuals, whole as a community. Division and dissent within the church and especially at the Eucharist is not a faithful proclamation of God's love in the gospel. When we realise that Christ was torn and broken for us all, when we see that reality made present on the altar in the consecrated elements, we should be drawn to think less of ourselves and more of others. At every celebration of the Eucharist, even one such as this, we represent a broken humanity and a divided people saved and brought together by the relentless grace of God. That is what our celebration of the Eucharist is. That's what it does and that's what it should mean. The breaking of the bread and the pouring out of the wine symbolises the reality of our redemption, the foretaste of heavenly joy and unity with God and with each other. In that sense, it is the only moment this side of heaven where we sample life as God intended, relating to our God and to our neighbour, as we one day will do for all eternity. Division done away with, sin conquered and heaven glimpsed in a simple meal at which bread and wine is blessed and broken. On this Maundy Thursday, let us pray that our lives and the life of our churches might truly embody this most precious of gifts. Let us wait in hope and expectation of the time we will all be able to share fully with one another in this holy and sacred meal and so be drawn together in unity in Christ and in unity with one another. Soon may we all, one bread, one body be, one through this great sacrament, of unity. Amen. In his washing of the feet of his friends, Christ taught us to love one another. Let us now pray to our Heavenly Father for the strength to carry out that command. For Justin and Sentamu, our archbishops, for Christopher, for David, for Nicholas, and for Norman, our bishops, for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may remain faithful to Christ's example of brotherly love and service to all. Lord, in your mercy. For our parishes and for the regional house, that we may always be ready to help one another. Lord, in your mercy. For those whose lives are dedicated to the service of others, especially those working within the National Health Service and other frontline services, 
that they may be given strength and grace necessary to carry out their work. Lord, in your mercy. For the poor and suffering, that Christians everywhere will show them the love commanded of us by Christ. Lord, in your mercy. For our own particular needs, which in silence we now articulate before the Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Father, your Son, Jesus Christ, commanded us to love one another. Help us to be faithful to that command and to dedicate ourselves to a life of service to others. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. God our Father, your Son, Jesus Christ, has left to us this meal of bread and wine in which we share his body and blood. As we keep the feast of his redeeming love, may we feed on him by faith and receive his grace and fullness of life through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right to give you thanks, Father most holy, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, for on this night he girded himself with a towel and taking the form of a servant washed the feet of his disciples. He gave us a new commandment that we should love one another as he has loved us. Knowing that his hour had come in his great love he gave this supper to his disciples to be a, rem a memorial of his passion that we might proclaim his death until he comes again and feast with him in his kingdom. Therefore earth unites with heaven to sing a new song of praise. We too join with angels and archangels as they proclaim your glory without end and as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, that is, on this very night, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
when supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Christ is the bread of life. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Remember your church in every land. Reveal her unity, guard her faith, and preserve her in peace, together with Veronica, Maureen, Kath, Nicola, Miriam, Richard, Gillian, Malcolm, Colin, Nigel, Judy and family, Kate, Sally, Lisa, Jane, Rebecca, Charlotte, George, Henry, Josh, Kate, Phil, Carol, and Sophie, Richard, Ted, and amongst the departed for Tim, James, Jesse, and all who look to you for comfort and strength. Lord, look with favour on all your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Apostles, with St. Michael, St. Andrew, and all the saints, to be with you forever at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. As often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that in this wonderful sacrament you have given us the memorial of your passion. Grant us so to reverence the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may know within ourselves and show forth in our lives the fruit of your redemption. For you are alive and reign, now and for ever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. As you would have seen, the sacrament has now been reserved from this celebration and we do invite you to join us from 9 o'clock live this evening via Facebook in order to keep watch and we'll conclude that watch an hour later with Compline at 10. When the disciples had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Jesus prayed to the Father, If it is possible, take this cup of suffering from me. He said to his disciples, How is it that you are not able to keep watch with me for one hour? The hour has come for the Son of Man to be handed over to the power of sinful men. Come, let us go. Christ was obedient unto death. Go in his peace. 